as we all know, there's a lot of shootings going on. And unfortunately, uh, within our church, so as we all know, there's a lot of mass shootings going on. And due to the mass shootings, our church was actually even affected by it as well. So we've seen that. So there's a lot of shootings going on. It's like making you wonder what is going on with our world. It's coming to an end. Now, uh, don't get me wrong. I am aware concerning the conspiracy out there about false flags and then shootings and stuff like that. But we got to realize this is that whenever there's a shooting incident, we can't just immediately dub that as false flag. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's going to be, whether we like it or not, there's going to be a genuine shooting somewhere. Yeah. There's going to be a genuine shooting somewhere. And especially when you look at the facts over there, uh, it is important where we do question, where we do question about the incident, whether it really happened or not. But we, uh, even though we have the right to question it, and it should be important, that way people don't just follow with the flow of the government system, you got to be careful where you're also keeping a precaution at the same time, a precaution that somebody died and you don't want to contribute to that. That's good. Yeah. Now, a great example is Sandy Hook shootings. That's like a prime example. But you noticed how Alex Jones, he had to cave in at the end. Yeah. You know why? Because when the pressure gets tough and especially the world, the world, all the world is watching you and putting you with that pressure of people crying in tears over people being shot at. Now, I'm not saying Sandy Hook was a genuine case, but here's the thing. I would be very careful to open my mouth about that because pretty soon they're going to put me under that hot seat. And you don't want to be the one that compromises at the end. See that? So the best advice is like I always taught you. Be wise concerning good, but simple concerning evil. Amen. Don't get into all the specifics of that. Just simply show what the Bible says about it and then leave it as it is. And let the specifics play out itself. Let everyone bust their necks about the specifics. You don't have to be that way. Amen. Okay, now the mass shootings, here's my point right here, is that I mentioned a little bit about false flag. Now, remember this, not everything is false flag. So I don't want people to get upset at me about this. So let me put that disclaimer in there. And don't you dare accuse me about that. Yeah. I mean, our church even suffered through this. OK, I'm telling you that as a matter of fact. OK, now concerning about uh, the false flag shooting and not only that, but we also heard about red flags, right? So this is going on. I don't know if some of you heard about this, but Trump he is now pushing this idea concerning about certain red flags that you see within an individual where now we're going to have to put uh, more gun control precautions. So now we got this one going on. Now, am I saying that I'm all for gun control or I'm anti-gun control? No, I like to look at both sides of the argument right here. I like to put both sides right here and let the individual discover him or herself. I'm not for or I'm against. I'm not in that bunch. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm all for uh, the rights, the right to bear arms. But I'm also very careful where I don't like where we can all agree that we don't like criminals having guns. Yeah. We have that rule. But that's not part of where we put banning guns. Yeah. So we got this liberal mindset about banning guns, banning guns because of mass shootings going on. So I'm not for that, obviously. I believe that we have the right to bear arms because it is scriptural. Yeah. I have a few videos already on that one. So should Christian ban guns? That's the title of the video if you want to watch that one. So I'm not for banning guns. Now concerning gun control, that's where we come into abstracts and more specifics. And then the best advice for a Christian is this. The best advice for a Christian is that we stick to the Bible. Amen. That's it. Amen. And we don't have to get into political issues. And then there's so much division amongst the body of Christ. And we don't want to give the liberal world out there legitimacy where they criticize us. So how specific on gun control and how much less gun control? I'm not for that. You might say, how so? Because my solution is different from yours. You know how you can solve this thing concerning about this gun incident? you become a Bible-believing Christian. That's it. What solves violence? It's not banning guns or more gun control. 
Because let's say this, okay? I can agree concerning about dangerous individual or criminals not having guns, okay? But here's the problem. When you get more specifics in politics right here about where people think you're an endangerment or the government thinks you're a danger, then how, how much far can that thing go? Oh, well, let's look at their medical condition concerning psychologists and psychiatrists. Well, look what they say concerning Trump being president of the United States. They say he has a mental condition. You got psychologists, psychiatrists saying that. So I'm not, so there's an endangerment to both sides of the issue. There's weaknesses and holes in both sides of the issues. So the Christian solution is simply this. Just be a saved Bible-believing Christian. Just put Christian principles. And then guess what? Then you have more peace. There's no violence. But when, think about this, look at church history. Ever since we had the Second Amendment, the right to bear arms and stuff like that. When Christian principles went downhill, yep. Yep. wasn't it obvious that violence had increased? And back at the Great Awakening revivals, and even during the early 1900s, we weren't that concerned that time. Why? Because there was more Christian principles back then. So the solution is concerning Christian principles. It doesn't matter about if you have red flags, or then even the other side concerning false flags. It doesn't matter about both sides of the issue right here. The point is this, is that with both sides of the issue is not going to solve violence. Yeah, that's right. Violence will always spurt out if you drop Christian principles. Amen. Yeah, amen. It will always come out. You might say, how so? Well, look at before guns at Matthew chapter 11, verse 12. Look at before guns at Matthew chapter 11, verse 12. The Bible says right here, Jesus said, and from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffereth what? Violence, and the violent take it by force. Jesus Christ argued right here that the worldly kingdoms, the kingdoms of this world, suffers violence. So kingdom of heaven, in case some of you don't know, that's referring to a worldly kingdom, not up in heaven. So the world is suffering violence, and that's inevitable if you look at Genesis 6. Go to Genesis chapter 6 now. Genesis chapter 6. Genesis chapter 6. Well, what do you, we got to do gun control this, gun control that. Just put Christian principles and see what happens. But see, if you want to drop Christian principles, that's why you're going to come across gray areas concerning about gun control and then eventually gun banning, which it will lead to. But here's the idea, is that it would, it's going to lead to those gray areas when you, whenever you drop the Bible, whenever you drop Christianity, you're going to be in a fuss and you will always debate about gray areas. So that's why Christians don't get involved in politics, see? We don't get involved in politics. Now, as far as biblical issues are concerned, if there are political matters that match more with the biblical principle, that's what we side with. That's why we always get on Democrats more than Republicans. And that's why we'll side more with Republicans or Tea Party more than the Democrats. But remember, the, the other side, Republicans, conservatives, have holes too. Why? Because they're dropping the Bible more. That's the idea. So the simple answer is just go by the Bible. And then a political issue that goes with the Bible, you just stick to that. A political issue that doesn't go by the Bible, then what do you do? You drop it. That's the idea. You drop it. So then, here's the, uh, here's the problem with this red flag thing. Okay? I can understand concerning the liberal side. I'm trying to be fair. But see, if you put Christian principle right here, then we don't have to d debate or discuss about this issue. Yeah. See, you just stick to this one. Yeah, this now I'm going to tell you the problem with this yeah, one, okay? Come on. Come on. I already told you I understood this, but I already gave you an answer. Just put Christian principle. Yeah. But now that you drop Christian principle, I'm going to critique this here. Yeah. You know what the problem with this is? The problem with this is that when you put this red flag notion, yeah. the problem is how far will it go, right? So then you're going to go by what the government and how the people view it, right? But when you go by the government and by the people, I already brought up those arguments. I already brought up the arguments that concerning government and people, how trustworthy can they be concerning this matter? 
Another thing is this, is that just because you look at a lot of uh, tweets and other Twitter accounts where they give violent reactions and stuff like that, how many millions and thousands of people you see that? That's right. And then they're not the ones who do the shootings and kill a lot of people. See, I mean, how far can this go? And not only that, how can we honestly tell who's going to be the violent person or not when you look at their Twitter account, uh, when you judge a person by their everyday appearance? I mean, even at church, there are people who judge outwardly and says, I think this person is this, I think that person is that. And then what are we going to do, arrest everybody? We're going to confiscate uh, their possessions, etc. See, it's not guaranteed. You can't, even though you're trying... You can't guarantee it. That does, that's not guaranteed to solve the violence. Yeah. And even if you confiscate the weapon, that's not going to eliminate violence. See, so how trustworthy is this? Well, we're trying to put a foothold somewhere. Yeah, but you're looking at the wrong foothold. This is where you should put a foothold that's somewhere. Good. Okay, so let's look at Genesis chapter 6. You know what this is going to lead down to? This is, gonna not, this is not going to stop violence. Didn't you know that? You might say, how so? Because the Bible says so. When you look at Genesis 6, the Bible talks about the days of Noah. What did the Bible say that at the tribulation what's going to happen? As it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be also in the coming of the Son of Man. In the tribulation, it's going to be as the days of Noah. Will this red flag thing help? The Bible already told you, no. Even if you're trying to put a foothold somewhere, no. Because look at Genesis chapter 6. Uh, let me turn this page here. The verse says, in verse 5, And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every... Here's the key why you have mass shootings. Imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. You know why these, some of these guys did these mass shootings and stuff like that? It's because of what they were watching, what they were thinking in their hearts. There's your answer right there. So the solution is this Christian principle where you aim at the heart of the matter. That's the idea. Not this. That's not going to solve their heart. Their heart will always find some sort of means for violence. Let's uh, look at verse... 11. The earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with what? Violence. And God looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. And God said unto Noah, The end of all flesh is come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them. Now, you see what God was looking at. He was not looking at guns as the issue here. He was looking at the heart. He was looking at the heart of the matter. That's what causes chaos in our world. So this is not going to help our world. What's going to help our world is that you push this one. That's the idea. Now look at, this is something interesting. I want you to go to the book of Zechariah. Zechariah. Guess what's going to happen, friend? I'll tell you what's going to happen. Gun control and gun banning is, it will happen. It's going to happen. That is of the Antichrist system. You might say, how so? Well, you know, what about these people who have violent issues, stuff like that? I already told you I understood that matter. So you've got to go right here. That's why I can understand why you resort to this. Because if you ignore the Bible, obviously the logical solution you're going to go to is over here. I already told you that. But see, Satan's going to use logical solutions humanistic logical solutions that you use to contribute his antichrist system one day. Amen. Remember this, just because you have a good motive, good cause, you don't think Satan's not going to use that? Amen. If it's outside of the Bible, Satan will use any motive and cause out there, good or bad. Yeah. Mm -mm. Now, how will this contribute to the antichrist system? Oh, I'll tell you, it's pretty easy. You know why? The simple solution concerning about guns, why this is going to contribute to the Antichrist system one day, is because that is what the Antichrist wants. You might say, really? Yeah, because in the tribulation, there is a gospel. You know what the gospel is? The gospel of armed warfare. That's part of your four gospels. You didn't know that, did you? 
Didn't you know God actually wants every individual to have this at the Antichrist end times? You might say, why is that, Pastor? Because they have to battle the Antichrist. So God wants them to arm themselves because the Antichrist, and who's he ruling? The government. Now look at this red flag thing. What's this doing? Who's the judge on taking, confiscating and controlling your weapons? Wow. Even though it's understandable, I told you, from a humanistic standpoint, it's understandable. But Satan, see how he uses this to contribute to the Antichrist system? Wow, how about that? I didn't know that. Well, why didn't you know that? You know why? Because you never read your Bible. That's why. That's your problem. All right, we're going to look at the book of Zechariah. And then, let's see right here, we're going to look at chapter, e, uh, chapter 11. Zechariah, and it'll be chapter 11. So notice right here, he is speaking to Israel because he mentions at verse, oh, I just lost the verse. Three, there is a voice of the howling of the shepherds for their glory is spoiled, a voice of the roaring of young lions for the pride of Jordan is spoiled. Okay, so it's concerning the nation of Israel, that region over there. You're also going to notice that at verse 10, and I took my staff, even beauty, and cut it asunder that I might break my covenant, which I made with all the people. So then the Lord, he's talking about the nation of Israel again over here. Look at verse 14. Then I cut asunder mine other staff, even bands, and I might break the brotherhood between Judah and Israel. Right? We see that. Now look at verse 3, chapter 12 and verse 3. And in that day will I make Jerusalem a burdensome stone for all people. All that burden themselves with it shall be cut in pieces, though all the people of the earth be gathered together against it. So remember, the context is Israel. And notice the Antichrist nations are going against the nation of Israel. They're all gathered together to make war against him. Look at verse 5. And the governors of Judah shall say in their heart, the inhabitants of Jerusalem shall be my strength in the Lord of hosts, their God. In that day will I make the governors of Judah like an hearth of fire among the wood and like a torch of fire in a sheaf. And they shall, what, devour all the people round about on the right hand and on the left, and Jerusalem shall be inhabited again in her own place. Uh, let's see right here. Um, show... Chapter 14, chapter 14, verse 2, chapter 14, verse 2. For I will gather all nations against Jerusalem to battle, and the city shall be taken, and the houses rifled, and the women ravished, and half of the city shall go forth into captivity. Uh, verse 3, then shall the Lord go forth and fight against those nations as when he fought in the day of battle. Uh, let's see right here. Uh, verse 13, and it shall come to pass in that day that a great tumult from the Lord shall be among them and they shall lay hold every one on the hand of his neighbor and his hand shall rise up against the hand of his neighbor and Judah also shall fight at Jerusalem and the wealth of all the heathen round about shall be gathered together, gold and silver and apparel in great abundance. Uh, verse 16, and it shall come to pass uh, that everyone that is left of all the nations which came up against Jerusalem shall even go up from year to year to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, and to keep uh, the feast of tabernacles. Now, what you're going to notice right here is that throughout these passages as Zechariah, you notice where the Lord, he was uh, gathering, he is gathering up the nations and these nations, according to the Antichrist system, they battle Israel. But you notice that Israel, what do they do? They summon themselves. They gather together. When God is coming down to battle, Israel is preparing themselves for war to battle the Antichrist. What does the Antichrist want? To weaken. He wants to weaken God's people and strengthen his own nations because they're the ones who confiscated and took all the, uh, the weaponry for themselves. You'll notice that. 
I would encourage you to read the entire passage of uh, the book of Zechariah. I would encourage you uh, to read a lot of the chapters in the book of Zechariah because it's going to talk a lot about Israel being uh, bat battling against other people. And while they're battling other people, they're going to have to consistently fight. And they're going to have to consistently war against them. As a matter of fact, let's look at also chapter 8. Chapter 8. And we're going to read chapter 8 and verse 6. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, if it be marvelous in the eyes of the remnant of this people in this days, should also be marvelous in mine eyes. So there's a remnant because the Antichrist, he kills and massacres a lot of God's people. So then there's a remnant left over. But look at verse 9, what God tells them. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, let your hands be strong. Ye that hear in these days these words by the mouth of the prophets, which were in the day that the foundation of the house of the Lord was laid, that the temple might be built. For before these days there was no hire for man, nor any hire for beast, neither was there any peace to him that went out or came in because of the affliction. For I set all men, everyone, against his neighbor. But now I will not be unto the residue of this people as in the former days, saith the Lord of hosts. Now you're going to notice right here that at verse 9, God summons them to be strong. God summons them because all these nations are battling against them. You're also going to look at verse chapter 9, verse 10. It's all over, you're going to notice. You're going to notice it's all over at the ch every chapter of Zechariah where God is telling these Jews to be able to strengthen themselves, to build up their security against the nations who are coming against them. Uh, we're going to look at chapter 9, verse 10. And I will cut off the chariot from Ephraim and the horse from Jerusalem, and the battle bow shall be cut off, and he shall speak peace unto the heathen, and his dominion shall be from sea even to sea, and uh, from the river even to the ends of the earth. Now notice right here that uh, verse 13 as well, When I have bent Judah for me, filled the bow with Ephraim, and raised up thy sons, O Zion, against thy sons, O Greece, and made thee as the sword of a mighty man. The Lord shall be seen over them, and his arrows shall go forth uh, as the lightning, and the Lord God shall blow the trumpet, and shall go with whirlwinds of the south. Uh, the Lord of hosts shall defend them, and they shall devour and subdue with sling stones, and they shall drink and make a noise as through wine. Now perhaps these sling stones could be referring because their weapons were being confiscated more and more. Perhaps. I don't know. But that would be interesting. Uh, anyways, and they shall be filled, with, filled like bowels and as the corners of the altar. And the Lord their God shall save them in that day as the flock of his people. For they shall be as the stones of a crown lifted up as an ensign upon the land. So you notice right over here that the Lord God, that he uh, defends his people because the people right over here, they're trying to battle against the Antichrist and his nations. But you'll also notice a shortage of supply. And then the Lord actually mentions that in the end, Israel will have no need of weaponry, actually. You might say, why is that? Because when God finally crushes and confiscates and bans all the weapons of the Antichrist, he will take full control Amen. over the system. See, the idea of this, uh, the reason why we're against this is because you really think this is a good government and good people. Mm -hmm. This is why we're against that. You need a perfect God, to be honest. Amen. That's where you have gun control, gun banning, all weapons actually confiscated. It's because you need to put at the right hands. To look at the good points of government and people, you ignore the, the rise and the likeliness and the capability of evil. That's the danger. And guess what? The Bible told you the Antichrist system, it will be evil. And they will battle against God's people. So because of that, that's why this gospel of armed warfare is necessary for God's people. Christians have no need of fear or worry about this because we will be raptured before the tribulation. So we could care less what the government does with our weaponry. Because you know why? We're going to be raptured. But the people who are left behind at the tribulation, they're going to need this all that they can.